Well, hello. Welcome to the Crystal Crawford Show. We did not have sound there for about one solid minute. So <laughs> I'm just going to start over. Thank you, somebody, for commenting. Apparently, I just got to be cute on camera for a minute. Anyway, welcome to this week's episode. I called it Unlock What Isn't Working For You. And uh, I just sent, spent a minute telling you about that. <laughs> hello. Hi, guys. I'm glad you're live with me. And for you guys listening in the future, I'm so glad you're here, too. Listen, this episode is coming from two places. One, we open the doors again for Salon de la Consciousness again tomorrow. And the doors are going to be open for another week. Hi, all of you. Um, we only open them every two to three months just because. But Salon de la Consciousness is a, an ongoing membership where you get one call with me a week. And we study. We study the materials. And right now we're in the middle of Living Beyond Distraction, which is this incredible book from Access Consciousness. We are just finishing up week number four on blame, shame, regret, and guilt. And we're heading into addictive, compulsive, obsessive, perverted points of view. And so I, I called this week's episode, Unlock What Isn't Working For You from that point of view. But also I had a pretty shit week last week, <laughs> self-created. And um, so I wanted to use you know, what I created that was awesome and what I created that was shitty. And the conversation that I had this morning on Club Consciousness with Shannon O'Hara to talk about this topic so that you can walk away with something from some stuff that's really actionable. And then you're warmly invited into deep diving with us on a regular basis. Um, this week, I, I'm always fully engaged in really actively applying the Access Consciousness tools. And so and so my life is always dynamically opening up and changing. And we've been as a group of 600 people doing a 30 by 30 um, in the Awareness Challenge group on Facebook, which you can find, you can Google that and find it. Um, and it goes like this, it's very, it's from Right Riches for You from Gary Douglas. And it goes like, what would it take to be willing to live the energy of what I would like my life to be so it can show up for me in totality? and everything that doesn't allow it and all the thoughts, feelings, and emotions, and no sex I'm using to absolutely refuse and reject my life and the energy I'd like my life to be, I destroy and uncreate it all. Right, wrong, good, bad, pod, puck, all lane, shorts, poison, beyonds. If you have not done that out loud for yourself 30 times a day for 30 days, please go do it. Go to theawarenesschallenge.com. It is just such a gift. And this is probably my fourth time going through it 30 times a day for 30 days, just so you guys know. And I've done these 30 by 30s for almost three years straight. So I've been doing one clearing 30 times a day for 30 days for almost three years. This is my fourth time doing this clearing. And man, wow. Yeah. <laughs> so what's been coming up to change or what I thought was coming up to change till this morning were all the thoughts and the feelings and the emotions that I've been doing that are coming up to change, that would keep the energy of what I want my life to be out of my life. So I'm, I'm giving you that big preface because um, this is gonna happen for you too. When you feel stuck or when things feel more intense than they ever have, or when you've got a pattern really showing its face, when relationships seem harder, or you know when anything kind of comes to a peak, that's the moment you got to look at it and go, is this the change I've been asking for showing up in a totally different way? And you have to ask that because if you don't, you're just going to feel more fucked up than you ever have. But when you're asking for what you want your life to be like, when you're asking for stuff, what is getting in the way, whatever it is you're doing unconsciously that's getting in the way of what it is you want to have as your life is going to come up to change. And so for me this last week, um, what came up to change was everywhere I still do reaction. Now, I know I've talked about this before. Apparently, this is my thing. But when I look at the way that I was, you know, raised, my family dynamic, it it makes sense. Because I, I was in the school of reaction for like 40 plus years. And I didn't really get a chance to really look at that till today when I was on the call with Shannon O'Hara. She, she does this incredible monthly series called Club Consciousness. If you guys aren't in it, I cannot recommend that enough. I need to get my affiliate link out for it because it's amazing. So 
so I came into the call with this question about like, what does it take to unlock this? Like what the ever loving heck do I need to be willing to be, know, perceive, receive to go beyond reaction? And listen guys, reaction shows up in so many different ways. It can show up as withdrawing, it can show up as anger, it can show up as silent treatment, it can show up as stonewalling. So it can basically show up as anything from like leaving the scene to leaving the scene and being absent while being in the scene to exploding the scene. That can all be reaction. And oh man, I was like, what, am, what do I have to look at here in order to get access to the choices that I have on the other side of this? That is actually a great question, just so you know. So it's like, if you're dealing with something, and actually somebody did write in, and I will speak to what she wrote. If you're dealing with something that you just feel stuck in, start asking, what choices do I have beyond this? And let that question just hang in the air. That will be the start of something, that will be the start of greater awareness. Something will start to shift with that, okay? Now, so I was asking this to Shannon, which was so helpful, and I knew we were gonna have a conversation that would unlock something else. So one of the key pieces that I got, and the reason I keep circling back to this, is I thought that what had been coming up to change were all the thoughts and the feelings and the emotions that I was doing. And what she suggested, she's like, is it those that are coming up to change, or is it coming, how did, I don't even know how she put this. Did you learn those? And what's coming up to change is learning something different. And one of the things she said that I've been percolating on all morning and I will continue to percolate on is, have you guys acknowledged what it is that you learned about whatever it is you're stuck in right now? So like if you have, a, for example, let's take my example, my this relationship dynamic, right? I, I'm not reacting because Andres is anything. I'm just reacting. It's what I'm doing. I do it to be right. I do it to feel right. I do it to defend. I mean, there's so many different things. You know, I become aware in the moment and I'm coping with awareness instead of, you know, out creating it. So there's a lot of things going on. But the bigger conversation is I'm doing a relationship dynamic that I saw modeled for me and that I played in for years. It's what I learned. And what I recognize today that I think is key to mention to you is that I have never fully really acknowledged that. I had still somewhere bought that there, I bought a couple things. I had still bought that I was doing this. Hmm, how do I put this in, the, in a way that's actually accurate? Cause I am doing it. <laughs> but what I mean is like, I had assumed a wrongness of me. Instead of really acknowledging what was true, which is that I had been in the school of reaction for 40 plus years, right? That's what's really true. That it makes sense when you're in a school of reaction for 40 plus years that you're actually going to do that as a, until you bring more consciousness to it, you're going to do that as an unconscious way of functioning in the world. So you take whatever you're struggling with or having a difficulty with or you feel locked up in and go, Where did, who did you learn that from? I think it's important to acknowledge that. Because I never realized until today as clearly as I did after she said it that I am going to have to learn a different way of being in relationship in this particular area where I do a lot of reaction because it's not our whole relationship. But there are these certain moments, these certain periods where I do it. I am going to actually have to learn another way of being that actually works for me. Now, the thing about when you're in reaction, you aren't in action. You are reacting. You're not in action. And so, you know, one of the things she brought up on the call today was like, instead of going to reaction, what would an action be in these scenarios? And I looked at it and I know cognitively, I was like, well, I could instantly go to interesting point of view. I have this point of view, that tool out of the 10 keys to total freedom. I could do that action. And so I started to see where it was like not doing that. Okay, cool. I've been in the school of reaction for 40 plus years. So that is not something that naturally occurs to me, right? It's like learning a new language. Spanish is not the first language that comes to my head. I've been in the school of English for 46 years, you know? So to learn a new language, I have to educate myself. I have to learn something different, right? So, thanks Mel. Um, so that's helpful to me. 
that that gives me so much space and allowance for me to i mean if i have to learn it it's going to take a minute right so that gives me a lot of space and a lot of gentleness and a lot of caring for myself to acknowledge i did learn it this way i can learn something new i can be taught <laughs> like this is possible if i've been okay i've been doing this for a really long time and I'm going to do it again. I can trust myself. And I can also trust myself that now that I have this new information that I need to learn something else, I need to really in those moments now really look at, okay, if I didn't have to do this or this, what would I like to choose? What's really true for me here? Because I personally in this area, this is what you've got to look at. I've been doing someone else's way of doing relationship. That is in, a, in this particular area, I've been doing someone else's way. Is it effective? No, it wasn't even effective when they were doing it. It was completely destructive. And I've been doing it in those particular moments. So it's not the way I want to be. It's just what I've been doing. I did learn it. And now what can I choose? So that I think that's thing num huge thing number one. Look at, did I learn this from someone? Who did I learn it from? And, and then go, is it really, is it working for me? And have I ever explored what would work for me here? And that's the second big conversation I want to have about this, which is that the next major thing I realized in this conversation this morning was that I was still putting a lot of my energy into trying to identify what I was doing that wasn't working rather than putting my energy into what I could create that was different. Now, I don't know what your life is like. I know for me, in some areas or with some topics, putting my energy into what I can create is a very natural thing. Man, this area of relationship for me, and, and I mean relationship with my siblings, with my partner, with myself even, has been a much longer road in terms of getting to the what can I create. So you're, you'll find that too in your life where there's different areas of your life where it this is an easier conversation than others. There's gonna be certain places where you tend to wanna to look for what is wrong or yeah, identify what you're doing that isn't working rather than just going, okay, whatever it is I'm doing isn't working. What can I create? Rather than doing that, you go into and spend all this energy identifying. So that's a lot of what was occurring today and, and Shannon just sort of redirected and she's like, well, you could just ask what else is possible with this. And I was like, oh shit, right. So it's like, that's another really important thing to get that you have, we all have access to this infinite amount of energy and we are so entrained to go looking for the wrongness period. And you got to look at what you think that's going to get you. I know there's something in my world, even still, as I'm talking about it, where I'm looking at, well, if I don't identify it, I can't change it. That is incorrect. That is incorrect. It's sometimes very helpful to be able to identify it. And does that mean I can't change it? No, because I always have infinite other choices in front of me if I'm willing to put my energy there. So first major thing is like, I'm doing this thing. Second major thing is like, did I learn this thing from someone? Third major thing is like, okay, can I learn something new? What would that be? And fourth major thing is like, what if I just, instead of getting stuck, like sticking myself in the reacting to this so that I can be right or whatever, I start to take action. And I, in that moment, when I want to react, go, well, I really want to react here. Okay, cool. <sighs> what could I choose that's different? It's like, what else is possible here that I haven't considered? And man, I, I'm telling you, even as I'm talking about it in this moment, I can feel like that I can perceive what feels like concrete blocks sort of starting to be lifted away. Like, this is not an area of my world that I've been generative and creative in yet. 
but we have a new choice in every 10 seconds. So it doesn't matter if you've been generative and creative yet, it just matters that you choose something now or now or now or never or now, right? That's the only thing that's relevant is like, okay, cool. Well, I've been doing that. Now what can I choose? So one of the questions I use a lot, question will open up space for you to be. Man, as soon as you're doing reaction, you are out of being. You've given yourself up. You've given yourself over to be controlled by whatever you're reacting to. So it's like there's got to be ways for you to be able to return to you, to be you, which isn't defined, but is definitely a presence. And question, true question, is one of the ways to return you to you. Even a simple question like, what else is possible here that I haven't considered? Then shut your mouth, go away, start looking at it and go, am I willing to be creative here instead of reactive? Am I willing to take action instead of react? And if not, okay, cool. I wonder what it would take to be willing is a question I've been asking a lot. I wonder what it would take to be willing. Um, and what choices do I have here that are different? This is where you will be the need and tug, the tug, whatever conversation you need into your world at this point, you know, like, and I can't talk, talk to you enough about living beyond distraction, the book. Um, we are just this week wrapping up with blame, shame, regret, and guilt. And we're getting into addictive, compulsive, obsessive, perverted points of view, which is really a lot of where this conversation got created from. And I wanted to read this to you real quick because it explains a lot. Addictive is the idea that you can't change something. Compulsive is the necessity to do it. Obsessive is where you must think about it and figure it out so it's right. So you can try not to do what is wrong that you are obsessing about. And then there are the perverted points of view. And this is not what you think. In this reality, the primary perversion is being a humanoid and not seeing the world the same way other people see it. That's the ultimate and perverse point of view. So the ultimate and perverted point of view is seeing life with a sense of joy, not a sense of judgment. Now, guess what covers up joy, anger? So in an effort to maintain our connection, and this is what I looked at with me, I was maintaining my connection points with my siblings primarily, not even my parents, with my siblings, in the way that I've been choosing to do relationship. Because if I really truly choose, and I will, when I choose, to be really truly out of control, for really, for nothing to really affect me and just everything be a choice. There will be nothing for them to connect to, to, you know, nobody will be able to pull me into reacting to control me. You know, there, there will be no connection points left. I'll just be so different that there's, there will be nothing to relate to. And this is where I really started to see that I had been trying to change this from the point of view that I could change it. I could change reaction from being stuck in reaction. It is, I can't even put that into words. I will try to articulate that better someday. Instead of going, oh, this thing that I've been sticking myself in, in doesn't work. <laughs> Never mind, which means I have no idea how to do relationship. Okay, that's actually a much freer space to function from. <laughs> it's like all of a sudden it's like, oh, I just don't know how to do this. Right, because I've never asked myself really. And I am being very black and white because this isn't true across the board. But for the sake of illustration, it's like, I just don't know how to do this. I don't, I've never been shown I've never even explored here what this is for me. I've never chosen this. I haven't invented this way of being in the world. I've just been doing this other way of relating that I've 
tried to change by continuing to do it and understand it and figure it out. But that doesn't work. So the ultimate in perversion is being a sense of joy. And that, you know, when I look at the way that my family does things, that is the ultimate, that they embody that that is the ultimate perversion. <laughs> Actually, if you are happy in the face of anybody else's unhappiness, man, you are actively made wrong because you don't care. You don't care. Like unhappiness is a sign of caring in my family. Ah, oh, man. And so all of us have something there, right? All of us grew up in some sort of soup. Cool. Now what? Does it work? Is it working? If it's not working, what else can you choose now? So this is another level with these dis distractor implants of acknowledging what is, which is that, yep, right in there. I'm in them. <laughs> you know? um, so, but, but let me read you this next little bit because this is so big. Um, okay, it's so big and then I lost it. Oh my gosh, I totally lost it. I'll just sum it up because what the next big part of that section that we're going to get into and study over the next four weeks is um, that we are primarily addicted to finding the wrongness of us. And man, so it's like when you combine these things, you know, what you learned, what you learned as a way of relating, as a way of doing money, as a way of doing choice, like, were you shown how to do, did, did the people around you actually practice choice? Mine didn't. So you look at what you learned and then you look at the distractor implant universe, which is designed to take you out of choice completely. And there's 24 of them. So once you're in one, you're in all 24. And you look at that, the primary addiction we have is to finding that we're wrong. Man, hello. So you can't fix all of that. You can only know what it is and jump off. And when you're really practiced in what you learned, it's going to take a minute. You know, I'm, I'm getting this. I'm starting to get it. <laughs> you know, eight years in, 120 access classes later, 42 books and 85,000 clearing loops. I'm starting to get it. <laughs> oh, but... You get it when you get it. And um, so here's what I'm getting. Here's what I want to invite you to look at. Stuck is a creation. So you're not stuck. You're just not choosing. And if you could engage fully as a creative source, if you could engage as a creative source here in this place where you're doing struggle, what would that be like? And what could you, what do you need to learn? Is maybe you need to learn choice. Um, one of the people that wrote in, Miss Andrea, I love you, my lady. Uh, let me write, let me read what she wrote real quick. It's relevant. She goes, what you described in face, it's just she's feeling really stuck. She goes, this clearing that we've been doing is bringing up so much shit for me. The funny thing is I found a journal that describes this same stuckness from three years ago. Now, I want to say something that if you think you're in the same thing that you were in, you're not. It's just showing up to change. You're never the same every single day. You're always different. It's a good news. So she's like, but she's feeling like this is the same thing from three years ago. She's like, oh, three goddamn years, my job and wanting to leave. I won't even get into the story around it. But the question I have for you is how do you jump? How do you not buy into the story of how it has to look like or be like, and what the fuck else? I feel like I'm on the edge and I just won't jump. So when the stuckness feels like it's caving in around you, how to jump and genuinely know the universe has your back no matter what. And here's what I'm gonna tell all of you guys about anything that you're stuck in. <sighs> you're holding yourself in stuck to justify not being uncomfortable and not fucking it up and the uncomfort of adventuring out into what it is you've never done before. And that's what I'm, I'm totally looking at that even in this 
this area of where I'm doing a lot of reaction, I'm in the same spot with that because I don't have any reference points for relating in a close relationship without reaction. I don't know what that is. I don't, I've not done it yet, to be honest. I do, I do it in a lot of times, but to like, not, like to give up reaction as a way of functioning in the world, like what is that? <laughs> <laughs> and it's uncomfortable. It's, it's so every single thing that you look at in your life that you've never done before is not going to be comfortable. It won't be. I promise you. You'll be uncomfortable. You might sweat and you're going to fuck it up. Like, I already know I'm going to fuck it up. But I don't say that from any judgment. I just know I know me. I can trust me. So if it wasn't about getting it right and it wasn't about even... What if you didn't have to trust yourself to choose? If it wasn't about believing in yourself, even trusting yourself, if it wasn't about any of that shit, if it wasn't even about feeling good. <laughs> and you could just even in a situation like that and put your choices in front of you and go, go, what will my life be like in five years if I choose this to leave? Yes or no? What will my life be like in five years if I don't choose to leave? Yes or no? And let's just say you get a yes that it's lighter, it's greater to leave. You can ask another question. Okay, leave now, leave later. And start to cultivate. This is where I started. I've been really cultivating, learning, practicing, trusting me. I don't naturally, I had, I did, I did not learn to trust me. I've had to teach myself and I'm, I'm getting so much awareness just even talking about this to you guys. I'm so grateful. But I thought, you know, and I'm so grateful to Access for giving us so much material that we can train ourselves with, you know. But I've had to teach myself. So, I mean, Andrea, I'm guessing you probably haven't had anybody in your life who has been like you, who has your choices available. So you're pioneering. And you're not going to be comfortable and you're probably not going to trust yourself but you can still choose. And what could you choose today? That would be fun. That would be uncomfortably fun, right? <laughs> I'm gonna put fun in air quotes because sometimes, sometimes being uncomfortable is fun, sometimes it's just uncomfortable and that's a little bit fun, but not really, but kind of. And other times it's more fun to stay miserable and what else is possible? Just what else is possible? What else is possible? So I will have a link for you guys. I know Andrea is already in the salon, so I'm going to see her on the call tomorrow. If you guys want the link to join us, you are so invited. Just put link in the comments and I'll make sure you get it. We are opening the doors again for another week. And this particular membership where we're studying, we are studying, we're learning. We're starting to apply what's in these books to our lives in a very, very, very pragmatic way. And it is changing us. It's so life-changing. So I, I just want you to know about this so that if you want that kind of change, you can have it. And so just put link in the comments and I'll make sure you get a link and you can join us. We're going to leave the doors open as of the recording of this. If you're listening in the future, just go to crystaljoycrawford.com slash salon. Um, if you're listening to this live, we're leaving the doors open for another week. And then we'll close them again for a while and then reopen in a couple months. So, um, yeah. Whew, what else is possible? What would it take for us to use our power and the energy we have available to us to invent, to create a totally different reality that isn't connected to anything we learned? That's an exploration and an actualization of what we want our life to be like, just because we can, just because it's more fun than what we learned. <laughs> I wonder. Share this with a friend if you loved it. And otherwise, I'll see you guys in the salon, and I'll see you guys next week.